Oh, mercy. <laughs> You know, I have a lot of people out there that love using Pastor Dow's name. They love using my name because, and, and the real true motivation is, is, is that they, they don't really want to have a healthy dialogue because if they did, they will call this number right here behind me and have a private discussion, a private conversation. And if they disagree, then we could set up some type of professional moderated debate. Give them an opportunity to debate their cause because for the, um, the most part, I, my platform is bigger than theirs. And I'm not just talking on YouTube, different other platforms as well. If you want to have a professionally moderated debate, I accept your challenge, sir. I have said many times that polygyny is a packaged deal. And you have yet to address all of the biblical evidence I provided in my seven part series and a host of other videos. Therefore. It is not necessary to have a public debate if you do not address all the points that I made. In addition to that, your platform is built off of publicity. That's what you said. You said all publicity is good publicity. So whether or not you are in adultery, according to your logic and your defense of yourself, according to you, that is good publicity. If you are in adultery, that is good publicity. So stop gaslighting the people as though your platform is coveted. You're banging another man's wife and you're showcasing her before the public, before the world. And you're doing it in arrogance, cursing that man, her former husband, Eric Gonzalez. And the demon that's inside of you keeps accusing others for exposing it. Uh, so just like in Christianity and all other so-called religious belief systems, um, it, it actually should be called the great omission is what's taking place today in Christian because the abandonment of the biblical family uh, has, is all but damn near been complete. And, and I tell you what, it should be an actual model to return back to the biblical narrative, the real true Israelite family and is spoken of in the Bible itself. And we need to abandon um, all this secular, so-called marriage knowledge, um, all this so-called religious marriage knowledge, all this European Christianity, uh, Roman monogamous type knowledge and all this other stuff. And everybody, male, female, children, uh, the cat, the dog, the skunk, and everybody, everybody needs to really truly understand God's program and see the reason why we're in the condition that we're in today. And we need to return to biblical polygyny. Those of you who are listening to the sound of my voice, do not practice polygyny. It is a trick of the enemy and it is evil. Monogamy is not a Roman Eurocentric concept. God always meant for man to be holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Okay? Man is to be whole, not attached to these multiple entities that have defiled the blood of women. You do not understand that the blood of women is what defiled the sanctification of polygyny because of the fallen angel or the serpent's seed that was permeated into the woman and succeeding generations of women. The law of Moses made provisions for the consecration of the woman through animal sacrifice, uh, weekly consecrations, and of course the law of jealousy, which obviously is not practiced today. As I stated before, polygyny is a package deal and a man must have the right to stone his wife to death if she is caught in the act of adultery or if the spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he must provide evidence before the elders of the city. That is all a package deal with polygyny. So address the facts or just shut your big mouth. Now. It's also extremely sad, and it's an ignored epidemic that's going on in the religious world that we live in today, and it's laws. We have women running around headless, and that's celebrated today. That's literally celebrated today. Um, and we have women trying to raise sons. A woman cannot raise a son, and because they are bitten of the fruit of lies, taking the knowledge of the, rare, the world, and Christianity, now we have a bunch of single family homes. Man's system of forced monogamy, even though if you look in the church and the society, none of them 
are being pure and they're living pure whatsoever at all and they're in no position whatsoever at all to try to tell us what's right and what's, what's wrong. Monogamy is no champion whatsoever at all of the family. They cannot begin to tell anybody what is moral. They cannot define what is values. Um, the very family institution called monogamy is the one who plunged the whole entire world into sin in the first place. That is a lie. Polygamy is what initiated sin into the bloodstream of men. Eve had sex with a fallen angel, of course, committing fornication against her body. Remember, he who commits fornication sins against his own body. And this is why Eve loses blood every month, because the sin she committed was so great, her committing fornication with the fallen angel, that that was the sin against her body, perpetual blood loss. Okay, also, Eve was dealing with multiple partners because Adam was her husband. So Eve is the first to commit adultery. She's the first to practice polygamy. This is why the Most High said her desire shall be for her husband, because Adam's desire was for Eve, and Eve desired to be like God so much that she sinned against her body with the fallen angel. And this is also why I believe the Most High allowed Adam and his descendants to practice polygyny for a period of time to reinforce the concept that his desire will be for her husband because her husband will be dealing with different women. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to take it slow too. When a man finds a wife, automatically, I'm going to stop right there, automatically they think, Mia, one, uno, one. When a man finds a wife, are you following me? He finds a good thing and attains favor with y'all. They think it's just one all the way across the board. Even though, even though, when a man joins himself to a harlot, they become one flesh, according to 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 6, verse 16. And it still goes over the head. In other words, when a man is joined to a woman, that's one flesh. He never limited one woman, two woman, three woman, four. It's still one flesh union. They ain't gonna never get it because they're so steep in their ignorance and monogamy. So how any of you gonna ever find a wife and obtain favor from y'all? How? If you keep your present mindset, it just simply ain't gonna happen. You see, it is Europeans who spread it the lie that women are attracted to what they hear and men are attracted to what they see, moreover. Women are attracted more so to what they hear and see than more than men. Women think about sex more than men. Sex is far more a part of the woman's identity. The Most High understood that the devil would try desperately to use the woman to checkmate his authority given to men over the earth to crush the serpent's head, according to Genesis 3. This is why, again, the Most High permitted polygyny for a time to populate the earth with head crushers, according to the late Pastor Stephen Darby. We know today that the woman has been complicit with the serpent through divorce and millions of aborted fetuses. These are the transgressions of the woman. Divorce, abortion, divorce, abortion, murder, murder, murder. Divorce is like spiritual murder. We know that the Planned Parenthood clinics capitulate to the emotions of women who have fornicated with the wrong men. As I've said before, the name Eve is rooted in the word evil. So a man joining himself to a harlot is evil. So I don't understand why Dirty Low Dow made this point. Because the man who joins himself to many women can be one with many women and not be holy. That's what it means by he who joins himself to a harlot becomes one flesh. Meaning he, he's, he's divided spiritually, giving himself to different women, giving his seed to different women. 
but this hypocrite does not understand this next level teaching. But I'm going to be going deeper into this in a series of videos that I'll be releasing within the next week. So stay tuned.